what are some of the problems you face in the distribution of water? The roads are very narrow, if you like. Erosion is a big problem because uh, it's not easy to build all the roads in the, in the country and because the development is a process. These are some of the hinders we have. We spend a lot of uh, money or fund in, in repairing our boat pipes because of this, as far as distribution is concerned. This, we try to keep our pipes as low as we can, but when the rain comes, mostly it tends to wash out some areas, some of the soil, and this expose our pipes, that also give us a problem. And some areas, the way you want to run the pipes, you have a problem because of space. You have a road, and then we don't want our pipes to be in the middle of the road because we are developing, then the space constraints also are issues. Some also, you have a problem also whereby people I think we are working with NEA on that. People are coming, digging soccer ways and waste for their waste is on the highway or on the way outside their compound. This also is a problem we are encountering and it's a big concern to us because we are supplying people. People are drinking from our supply and some customers, are, I don't know because they don't know or what, but I can advise, take the opportunity to say that there's a disease from that. Sometimes some pipes that you might cut and bear it, we did not know. You might be contaminating your own supply, your own family. So I take this opportunity to advise customers who are doing that, knowing that they might be harming themselves or their next door neighbor. Because if you see a pipe passing through you, knowing that it's transporting water to somebody else. So if you contaminate that one, you are also making uh, somebody suffer for things that he's not been aware. And sometimes the way they do it, we don't even see it because they dig and bury it. Some they will cut the pipes, they bury them. Even our, our electricity department, they have those problems. People cut their cables during the dry season and bury them. When the rain comes, it gives a lot of problems. So I will just advise customers to disease away from such kind of practices. And also, I always appeal, even garages where people repair vehicles, if we can minimize amount of oil, bond oil we pour on the soil, this also will take long time but it can also get to the aquifer and then it will be very expensive to treat. So my appeal is that as citizens, as customers, as Gambians, we should work together how we can minimize that in any way we to do to make sure that our source is protected to be fair to future because it's been safe for us, for us to use it today. We should also be fair to the future so that the future also find safe, clean aquifer for their consumption. From the tank, this is what is happening. I can drink it and you see, it's very nice. For me, when I look at our tap water, I don't say against about bottled waters, but I can drink straight. It's safe to drink. When you come to Gambia, water quality, we are lucky. I say that it's a national asset, belongs to all of us, let's protect it. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure talking to you. Well, there we've seen how and what it takes for our water to be processed. Thanks for the pleasure of your company. I was your host, Rohibite. The Mara Triangle in southwest Kenya is home of one of the greatest wildlife concentrations in the world. During the annual migration of herds within the Mara Serengeti ecosystem, the numbers of animals swell to over a million. 
Among these is the world's fastest mammal. Cheetahs are highly endangered, surviving in only a few places. They have binocular vision in large frontally placed eyes within a small head and, as the ultimate sprinters, they are highly specialized hunters. The cheetah is sometimes called half dog, half cat. The reason for this is that unlike cats, the cheetah has non-retractable claws. But more like a dog, its claws are blunt except for one dew claw on its front legs, which is very sharp and used to trip its prey in full flight. After all these conflicting facts, scientifically, the cheetah is still classed as a cat. All predators are similar in that they rely on prey to feed themselves. The cheetah hunts only by day and does not scavenge. The black-backed jackal is an efficient and bold scavenger, but also a hunter. Secretary birds live in pairs, feeding on snakes, rodents and insects, but their interest in the cheetah is a mystery. It is interesting though that the jackal too will hunt and eat the same animals as the bird. The jackal is an opportunist and will scavenge when it appears to require less effort than hunting. The jackal perhaps sees some threat from the birds to the meal he expects to get from the cheetah sooner or later. strange noise comes from the bird, not the jackal. jackal is perhaps the most annoying aspect of a cheetah's life and they seem to take incredible risks to get the cheetah to leave its kill. The jackal may annoy the cheetah in its persistence but it will not be able to steal the kill. The vultures know the cheetah will not eat all of the carcass. These scavengers fulfill the important role of cleaning up the plains after predators have eaten. The lapid-faced vulture is the largest of the avian scavengers. Strangely, the secretary bird attacks the vulture. It is possible that this animosity stems from the secretary bird having a nest in a tree nearby. This buffalo shows no interest in the drama being played out. After the secretary bird leaves, the lapid-faced vulture merely flies back to where it was before. 
It lands near a white-faced vulture and exerts its authority 